Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending January 20th. Thank you for all the contributions. I've got way more than I can even finish on this show. In fact, I'm going to have to split this into two shows, but that's fine. I'll do about four subjects on each show and then get to the other contributions next week. First up, this was sent to me by Lone Star. This is the tile, and he sent that because I talked about last week the XY Find It, uh, which was you can get them for around twenty-one ninety-five a piece. These are seventeen fifty a piece and a little bit thinner. There's also a video you can watch to see uh, what these are like. Uh, yeah, about the same size width. I mean, the same size except for the thickness. They reach about a hundred feet, which is pretty close to what the other one did. Uh, the XY Finder costs about three bucks more, and I think you get about fifty foot more of range. But um, the one thing about the tile, if you buy that, is you have to replace it after about a year. That's not interchangeable batteries. So they say after you pay your seventeen fifty, or you can buy them in bulk too. After about a year, you have to uh, pay for them. But it's basically um, just an item finder. It's something you can attach to your keys, attach to anything that you tend to lose and stuff like that. And uh, when it gets about 100 foot or a little past 100 foot out of range, it'll alert you so that you don't lose something. And it also has a feature in the app that goes with your smartphone that if for some reason you have a, an item that's stolen, if another person that has the app gets close by the item, it'll recognize that this is a stolen item and send you an email alert and tell you the location the item is at. So you have a chance to at least recover that item. But um, other than that, it seems to be very similar to the XY Find It that I talked about last week and being a little bit thinner um, that could be a good thing too if you don't mind the fact that after a year basically uh, no batteries to replace you just have to buy new ones or as they say you know send them back to us to recycle them but if you get a chance check out the video it's pretty good um, let's see this next one dark matter may be sterile neutrinos I didn't even know about this but now they're looking for a particle called a sterile neutrino. It's a neutrino that has no interaction. Most neutrinos don't interact with anything to speak of uh, for the most part anyway. I mean they can pass through the earth like it just doesn't exist but once in a while you do have neutrinos that are able to interact in different ways by hitting particles and stuff like that. Well evidently a sterile neutrino is not able to interact with anything other than gravity. I mean you're just not going to after billions and billions of them uh, are just not going to interact with uh, normal particles. And uh, it's something that hasn't been discovered yet. It's still a theoretical particle, but um, they say that sterile neutrinos may be the source of dark matter. And this is a paper. It's it's kind of a heavy read. It's from physics.org. Viewpoint X-ray line may have dark matter origin. And I'm just going to skip down a few paragraphs here. There's a, a lot of heavy reading here if you're interested. Now two teams have found evidence of an X-ray line at a consistent energy of approximately 3.5 kilovolts. The line is present in five independent data sets and is proportional to the dark matter mass in the field of view, which may indicate its connection to dark matter. DK Alexander Boyarsky and colleagues found this line in XMM Newton observations toward the Andromeda galaxy. And it goes on to talk about how they compare it to other observations made by other scientific experiments and, and the data that they have too. But they're seeing a particular line that they shouldn't see except for the fact if these sterile neutrinos existed. And they say the odds about it, let's see, the chance fluctuation that this would just be something random rather than be what they're looking for is greater than 99.999%. Um, they would like to increase the sensitivity in uh, a lot of these observations in the future just to be sure, but they think uh, that this is something that they're onto, that they may have discovered the that dark matter may at least. And, and I'm saying, too, the way it is, too, I, I think really if they do s find out that uh, sterile neutrinos is dark matter. It's probably not going to be all of dark matter. It's going to, every time they seem to come up with something like this, even if they do prove it, it gives you an idea of what part of dark matter is. So that's just my guess. That's just a guess based on the past. I don't, I'm not a physicist, I'm not an expert, and I really could not do a very good job of describing what sterile neutrinos are. As a matter of fact, I'll put a link um, after that the Wikipedia article where it talks to you and it gives you a little bit more detail about a sterile neutrino compared to a conventional or what do they call it an active neutrino I think is what it's compared to and uh, the fact of it's still a theoretical particle they have not discovered it this next one comes from Navy Thomas 8 and is from foxnews.com Voyager 1 rides tsunami wave in interstellar space seems like as it's getting towards the edges of uh, all of
the influence of our solar system and out into interstellar space, it's not quite as peaceful as we thought it was going to be. I'll just read the first few paragraphs here. NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft, the only object made by humans to reach interstellar space, might still be caught in what scientists have described as a cosmic tsunami wave, a shock wave that first hit the probe in February. Uh, according to new research, you can hear the, oh, I, I listened to it, you can hear the interstellar vibrations in a video. You can click on the link here, and you can actually hear what it sounds like for real, what, what it's going through. And next paragraph, most people would have thought the interstellar medium would have been smooth and quiet. Study researchers Don Gurnell, professor of physics at the University of Iowa and the principal investigator of Voyage 1's plasma wave instrument, said in a statement from NASA, but these shock waves seem to be more common than we thought. Such shock waves was what helped scientists determine that Voyager 1, which launched in 1977 on a grand tour, has officially left the solar system. So yeah, it's uh, not quite as quiet and peaceful in interstellar space once you leave the solar system as we thought. But if you get a chance, it's, there's way more to the article than this. I just read, read a small selection of it. But, yeah, it seems like uh, we're getting a lot more information and a lot more um, things that turn out to be a surprise to us than we thought. So Voyager is probably going to collect as much scientific data that's going to give us some information in the future uh, where it is right now as it did passing by and showing us some of the giant planets. And this one is from, let me get who sent this. This is from 1954 Shadow. My friend Bob, private moon drilling mission raises over one million via crowdfunding. Um, this is, I think this was a Kickstarter, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a Kickstarter campaign and they've closed down as far as the uh, million dollars to do the crowdfunding. What they're going to do is launch a probe to the, I'm, I imagine with one million dollars they're not going to pay for the whole mission itself. That's a rather small price. They're probably going to hit you a rent a ride or something like that aboard a, another craft or something is my guess. Uh, and then this probe is going to go down to the moon and it's going to actually dig quite of a, a large hole in the moon. Uh, well, not large, but long hole, approximately 65 feet or 20 meters below the lunar surface. And what they're also doing is they're going to, uh, once they have the core extracted, they're going to somehow um, hopefully be able to bring that core back. I, don't, I think this is going to be another budget they're going to have to do, though, as, as far as it's quite a mission to do with a million dollars just to get it there and even drill a hole. But they also want people, and this part is not closed yet, if you want to be part of the time capsule, you can actually, for a, a certain amount of money, you can have a, a lock of your hair or different objects. You know, it, Obviously, they can't be very large, but you can have a, a part of your life uh, taken to the moon and dropped into this hole because if you're, since they're boring this hole 65 foot deep, they might as well put something down in it and they're also going to put some measuring instruments too, like seismo uh, seismographs and stuff like that, and uh, temperature probes, things like that. But yeah, if you want to be a little part of this too, it's uh, although it's closed as far as funding the mission itself because they reached more than their goal, you can still contribute to the part of being uh, of sending part of you to the moon. So uh, check this out. And what else do I have here? Okay, didn't line up my things right here. I think there was one more I was going to do here. What's after this? No, that was it. That was the four that I was going to do. So, um, okay, that'll be it for this week. I'm keeping these kind of short because of the fact of the holiday coming on, and I'm going to have some more contributions for next week's show. I may record it ahead of time, being that the holidays are coming up. But, yeah, we're going to have contributions from Brian West, Jose Angel, and then some other interesting stories besides that and please if you find something don't hesitate to send it in I always like to have more backup material than I possibly can use because it's always nice to have extra rather than not have enough so um, that's about it for this week take care everybody I will catch you next week <laughs>